All right, MHN 200. All right, MHN 200. It's Dr. Wheeler again, uh, back to talk about the photo tachometer online project today. Um, so let's go ahead and start jumping in and seeing what that's all about. So I want to start off by asking you to consider a situation. So if you've ever been driving your car on an icy day and you go down the road and you apply the brakes to your car and you feel the brake pedal start pulsing underneath your foot, um, you may have experienced that before. That's uh, the anti-lock braking system activated. And what that does is it's sensing that your wheels are starting to lock up so they're not actually turning anymore. They're just fixed in place and you're skidding down the road. It senses that your wheels are no longer turning and to prevent you from going into an uncontrolled skid where you can't steer anymore, um, it starts pulsing the brakes so that applying as much braking as it can with while still allowing that, that uh, wheel to rotate so that you still have control and you can steer the car. So that system requires that the computer that's inside the car be able to measure um, if the wheel is rotating and measure how quickly that wheel is rotating. So it has a system that's very similar to what we're gonna be building today in your activity. Um, ours is gonna be based off of an optical sensor, hence the name photo tachometer. Um, but a tachometer is just a device that measures the rotational speed of some sort of object. It's a very common sort of system, not only in analog brake systems, but if you ever have to measure the speed of something like an engine or a turbine um, or any sort of electrical motor, like a robotic system, uh, there's typically going to be some sort of, of tachometer system in there where you're measuring the rotational speed of your system if you need tight control of that parameter. So. Let's talk about how we're gonna implement that today. So what we're gonna be using is we're gonna be using the photoresistor element in your circuit. And we're gonna set that up in a voltage divider circuit like we've done with a few other things um, during this series. And uh, we're gonna be using that to detect how much light is falling on the uh, photoresistor. So the way this works is when more light shines on the photoresistor, generally its uh, resistance is going to decrease. So in this particular circuit set up here, if the, this, the uh, resistance of this element decreases, we're gonna expect V out is also going to decrease. Okay, so um, if we were to change the light in front of this, we would see a changing V out signal, depending on how much light was showing, shining on that uh, photoresistor. So what we can do is we can take the fan out of your kit um, and stick it on the end of the motor. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an LED behind the fan and the photoresistor over here on the other side of the fan. And as this turns and it passes between the LED and the photoresistor, it's gonna block the light coming from the LED, right? And less light is gonna get to our photoresistor and we're gonna get a voltage change. So what we're hoping to see is eventually we'll see a, a voltage signal that looks something like this where when we uh, block the light, the voltage changes, and then when we unblock the light, the voltage goes back down, and we get this sort of wave here. So we know that every peak in this wave is one of the fan blades passing between the LED and the photoresistor. So if we know how long it takes these, these fan blades to pass in between uh, the LED and the photoresistor, like we can count how many fan blades per second go by, and we know that there's three fan blades on there, we can calculate how quickly the motor has to be spinning to get the, the fan blades to go by that quickly. Um, one quick note on that, you'll notice that the way your kit comes, the fan blades are clear, which is obviously not ideal for blocking light. Um, so to get this to work really well, I'd highly suggest taking something and making these uh, no longer transparent. So what I did in my setup is I just took a, a Sharpie and I just came in here. And if you just scribble on the fan blade kind of like this and just color it all over. It does a really nice job of blocking the light. And that worked great uh, when, I, when I tried this out. So you would do that on all three of the fan blades um, and that should help your, your system work really well. So I'd suggest doing that. If you don't have a marker or something like that, you could just use like masking tape um, or nail polish or whiteout or whatever you have on hand. Um, just something that makes these no longer see-through um, so that you get a, a nice clean blocking of the light. Um, that helps a lot so you get a nice clean vo uh, optical signal that we can detect the speed with there. All right, 
So, what we need to do is to be able to detect when these peaks go by. So like when one of these peaks um, occurs, and we have a bit of a problem with that because uh, this is happening rather quickly. The little motor in your kit can spin between four and 5,000 RPMs when it's got the fan attached to it. And it's very possible if we use some of our normal Arduino um, programming techniques in the void loop where it starts at the top of the loop and it works its way down through the instructions. If we were to try and use a technique like that, what could happen is one of the fan blades could go by during the part of the code where it's not looking for a fan blade and we would miss that. We wouldn't count that fan blade. And then we would end up with an inaccurate count of how many fan blades per second are going by. So we need a, a technique where we can interrupt the code really quickly to make sure that it always counts uh, the fan blades when they go by. And fortunately, Arduino gives us a tool to do that. So what we're gonna be using is called uh, an interrupt in the code. So the way this works is we have our normal void loop function and it has a bunch of stuff in it that it tells the Arduino to do. So your normal instructions, reading voltages, writing the serial port, all that jazz is going on. And it starts at the top of the loop and it just works its way down to the loop, end of the loop, and then it jumps back up to the top of the loop uh, when it's done there. And it keeps doing that as long as the Arduino's got power. Well, what an interrupt does is it allows us to have a second function outside of that loop that can be triggered by different conditions. And when this function is triggered, no matter where we are in the loop, it says, okay, stop that immediately, jump over here, do this stuff, and do it right now. No matter where you are in the void loop, you've gotta come and do this before you do anything else. Once you finish the instructions in this interrupt function, then you can go back to the loop and pick up where you left off um, on the same line, finish up the loop, and then start over again until the interrupt is triggered again, and then you come back over here, do these instructions immediately, and then go back. And this, the important thing here is we can trigger this interrupt at any point in the loop. So if we can set up an interrupt that will go when a fan blade comes between the LED and the photoresistor, then we can have this interrupt count that that fan blade has gone by and return back to the loop. And doing this way, we're never gonna miss one of those fan blades. Right, because this is a very, very fast process compared to anything that we could do in the void loop. Uh, so there's a couple of options of different ways that you can trigger an interrupt function in Arduino. The first way is uh, called a timer interrupt. So you can set the interrupt function to trigger after a certain amount of time has passed uh, since the beginning of the Arduino program. Um, that's useful if you want to you know, build a clock or something like that. For us, we don't know exactly when the fan blade is gonna go by. That's what we're trying to measure. Um, so that's not gonna work for our purposes. So we're gonna be using a type of interrupt called a hardware interrupt, which means that when we detect a certain condition on the Arduino's pins, um, like a voltage condition on the pins, a voltage high, voltage low, then that condition is going to trigger the interrupt. All right, um, so there's a few different ways uh, to do this. There's kind of a normal way of triggering an interrupt is where you have a, like a digital signal that goes to one of the pins. And if the pin is low, it's doing uh, its normal thing, just running through the void loop. And then if that pin goes high, it triggers the interrupt and it kicks it over into the function. Um, the problem that we have with this is that our voltage signal that we're getting from the photo or the photo resistor is not really a digital signal. It's an analog signal, so it doesn't go cleanly between like five volts and zero volts. It tends to hang out somewhere in between and just change slightly between those two values. The interrupt really wants to be triggered by a digital signal. So it's either zero volts or it's five volts. And depending on which one of these conditions it is, either it does trigger the interrupt or it doesn't trigger the interrupt. So to get this, this analog signal into a form where it's easy to trigger the, uh, the interrupt, we need to do a little bit more work. Now, fortunately, the Arduino has a tool for this built into it. We just have to install an extra library um, that's in the code already that'll handle this for us, but it's called a voltage comparator. So you're gonna learn a lot more about these in your 
uh, circuits class when you start talking about op amps. The op amp is essentially a voltage comparator. Um, but what it does is it takes in two voltages, voltage in and a reference voltage, which I'm calling VREF here, and it outputs a single voltage. And the way that that voltage works is that V out is going to be 5 volts if V in is greater than the, the voltage reference, and V out is going to be 0 volts if V in is less than the reference voltage. All right, so we can use this circuit that's built into the Arduino to compare the voltage signal that we're getting to a reference voltage and turn it into something that looks more like this. So the way we're going to do that is we'll, we'll have to create a reference voltage that's in the middle of the range of voltages that we get out of our photoresistor circuit. So we're going to create that with a second voltage divider circuit that's in the fritzing diagram and the circuit diagram um, in the handout that goes along with this activity. And we want that to be right in the middle of where this, this sort of wave coming out of the photoresistor circuit is. And um, the way I have the code set up in this example is the interrupt is going to trigger any time the, uh, the photoresistor voltage crosses the reference voltage. So I put a pink dot here every single time that the, uh, the interrupt should trigger. So all these crossings, we're going to get a triggering of the interrupt. Okay, let's take a look at sort of the flow chart of how this is, this is going to go down. And then we can take a brief look at the code to see that also. So over here on the left, this is my normal sort of loop function. And then I have my interrupt over here on the right. So the way this is going to work out is we start up, we set up our pins and all that jazz, and then we get into the loop. And what we do is we note um, what time the uh, program started to run. Okay. And we're going to ask the question is have sort of 50 pulses or has the interrupt triggered 50 times, right? And if it hasn't, then we just wait and we go back and we, we ask that question again. Okay. And once the, we've seen 50 interrupts happen, now we go in, we note the current time, right? So if we've seen uh, 50, 50 interrupts, we know how many fan blades have gone past. We can use that information. So we, we find that current time, compare it to the starting time and use that time difference to calculate the RPMs, right? Then we're gonna reset the pulse count and uh, go back up and start to save a new starting time and repeat this process over and over again. Now you notice that nowhere in here does it say, like count how many fan blades have gone by because that all happens in the interrupt. So when a fan blade goes by, it triggers the interrupt that comes in here and it's gonna check to see if 300 microseconds have passed since the last interrupt, all right? So this is called debouncing. We did this um, earlier on in the course when we were uh, doing the, the button activity with the Elego kit. Um, so what can happen here is the voltage coming out of the photoresistor circuit is not perfectly smooth. It has noise in it. So when we're very close to the reference voltage, there can be enough variation where the voltage is fluctuating just enough that it'll trigger this interrupt multiple times. And the interrupt's so fast that it's gonna see that um, even if it's triggering multiple times very quickly. So what we do is we say, all right, if, if uh, less than 300 microseconds have passed since the last interrupt, just exit the interrupt and don't, don't do anything. We'll just ignore that and consider that a false trigger um, that would be double counting a fan blade going by, all right? If more than 300 microseconds have passed, we'll say, okay, well, that must be a real event that we want to take care of. We're gonna add one to the pulse count and then we exit the interrupt and we go back to the loop, right? And we're just gonna keep doing this until we end up with 50 pulses and then we finally calculate um, the RPMs using this algorithm over here. Remember that this can trigger at any point inside of this loop. Right? So that's the real power of an interrupt is it's so fast that we can uh, make sure that we count every single fan blade going by, even if it's in a part of the code where it was like writing to the serial port to tell us what the, uh, the RPMs that were measured were, it was, it's still gonna count those fan blades going by. So let's take a look at the actual code and see what that looks like. All right, guys, here's our code in Arduino. 
So let's take a look at this. Um, right off the bat here at the top, you'll notice this include line here. This is a, the library that allows us to use the analog comparator on board the Arduino. So that's what's going to be helping us to uh, com compare the photoresistor voltage coming out to the reference voltage and uh, triggering our interrupt. So that's the key library that we're using here. Okay. And if we come down here, this is these are all just our variables that we're declaring that we can do math with. All right. Come to our setup. We're going to use the serial port so that we can read values out. Um, here's our line where we turn on the analog comparator and we tell it which pins are, are going to be used here. There's only one option on the Uno. It's pins six and seven uh, connect to the comparator. So we're going to be using those ones and this these uh, two codes here. That's still means digital pins six and seven are those two. They have a special name because they're connected to the, the comparator. Um, but if you just follow the wiring diagram and this code, you should be in good shape for this activity. Um, and then here, this line is where we're setting up that comparator where it's going to trigger the interrupt. Okay, so this is a pretty key line in the code here. So we're telling, using the library function to, to set up an interrupt, this argument right here is the name of the function um, that's going to run when the interrupt is triggered. And then here, this line change is any time the voltage coming from the photoresistor crosses the reference voltage um, and the can comparator changes state, so it goes from 5 volts to 0 volts, that's what triggers the interrupt. right? So we're going to get two interrupts every single time a fan blade passes by. Okay, So we can go along, we can uh, go through here. I've given you a analog write value here. This will set the, the speed of your motor, so you can uh, uh, write different values in here. So 255 is full speed. Um, and you can you can test different speeds by changing the number in that line right there. Okay, we come into the loop. This is uh, the normal loop that we we use in Arduino, and uh, we can tell that this is not going to do anything unless we trigger this if statement. So unless we've seen 50 interrupts so far, uh, nothing's going to happen. But if we have seen 50 interrupts, then we're going to jump into this loop here. It, it grabs the current time that's going to compare against the starting time. So we're using the, the micros function, which will return the amount of time that's passed since the Arduino started running in microseconds. All right, we find the change in time. We do math uh, to get to the RPM value, right? And then we're going to write that RPM value out on the serial port, port so that we can plot it, okay? Um, once we're at the end of this, we also want to reset our variables so that we can take our next RPM measurement. So the starting time is going to become whatever the current time is when we took our last measurement, and we're going to reset our interrupt counter here on these two lines. All right, this is outside of the if here. So if if we haven't triggered this, all that happens is we wait and we go back to the top of the loop. Okay, and you'll notice that nowhere in here do we call the interrupt. Like there's there's nothing in here that uh, is is telling what allowing the interrupt to count up. We don't see that anywhere in the main loop because that's what happens in our interrupt function. So when the interrupt is triggered, when we have that comparator change values, then this function down here, the interrupt function, is what's going to run. Okay, I've given you a, a line in here, the serial print line interrupt. If you're having trouble getting values out of your um, tachometer, you can uncomment that line and open up the serial port. And every time the interrupt function runs, you should see the word interrupt pr printed to the COM port. Um, so that's a quick way to check and make sure that the, the interrupt function is actually triggering. Okay, so that might be useful. Um, and what happens in here, the main thing that happens is every time the interrupt runs, we get this interrupt count variable, it's one added to it, but we only add one if it's been more than 300 microseconds since the last time the, the interrupt function was called, like the last time we had a true um, interrupt that was called. So this is our debouncing line and that deals with the, the noise 
coming from the voltage from the photoresistor. If there's any noise in there, we get multiple triggers of the interrupts um, when we should only have one, that's gonna take care of that. So that's our debouncing line. Okay, and then we need to store when we trigger this interrupt uh, to debounce the next interrupt that could occur. All right, so that's what's going on in the code. So with that, we should be able to jump back over to the electronics board and see what's going on over there. And we'll actually run this. Keep talking about this. All right, so here's our math for determining what the RPMs are. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna count how many interrupts occurred and we're gonna divide it by the amount of time that it took for those interrupts to go by. So we're taking 50 interrupts, we take determine the time that it took for uh, 50 interrupts to go by in seconds and do that division, right? We know that each blade is gonna give us two interrupts because we have this set up so that it um, triggers the interrupt every time the photoresistor voltage crosses the reference voltage. So when the blade starts to come across um, in front of the LED, we get one interrupt trigger. And then when it's leaving and it's unblocking light, we get a second interrupt trigger. So this little peak here, that's one blade going by, but we have two interrupts off of that. So there's gonna be two interrupts per blade, right? Each revolution of the fan has three blades associated with it. And then we're converting from uh, revolutions per second to revolutions per minute. So we've got to multiply by 60 seconds to cancel that out. So if you look at this, our unit conversion here, we have uh, seconds cancel it, canceling with seconds, blades cancel with blades, interrupts cancel with interrupts, and we should just be left with revolutions per minute, so RPMs, All right? So that's how we do that, that calculation. Why don't we take a look at how this setup actually runs? So I'm gonna pan the camera over and hopefully the uh, streaming software doesn't crash. All right, and here it is. So here's our photoresistor. And you can see the fan blade is set up so it's gonna pass in between the photoresistor and the LED, which is right here on the other side. You're gonna have to be a little creative on how you mount this up. So you can use tape or cardboard or um, uh, one thing that I think works pretty well is you can also mount the motor vertically, like tape it to the edge of a table. And then you could put your LED in a breadboard and figure out how to get the photoresistor to be over the top. You can even just hold it by hand. Um, but the more steady you can get this, the easier it's going to be. This is pretty sensitive to making sure that the LED and the photoresistor are well lined up with each other, All right? And we should be able to fire this power up to this, and it's going to start spinning and turn on the LED for us. All right, and now let's take a look at what that voltage um, coming from the photoresistor actually looks like, All right? So you guys can't do this because you don't have an oscilloscope on hand. So an oscilloscope is just a device that plots voltage versus time, and it's very fast, so it can see rapidly changing signals like we get um, from that photoresistor. But I happen to have one, and I'm also able to uh, bring it up on screen here. So let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, so in the yellow line there, you can see our signal coming from the photoresistor, and then the blue line is going to be our reference voltage, right? And you can see we have the yellow line should be crossing the blue line. Um, it's a little bit weak there, which might mean that I have an alignment issue. You can see how sensitive this is to having the LED lined up properly. So ideally we want, yeah, we want something like that where the reference voltage is clearly in the middle of the, the range of that wave there so that we're really cleanly triggering that uh, interrupt. If you don't have the uh, reference voltage in the middle of, of that voltage range, it's not gonna trigger the interrupt. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about how you could troubleshoot that a, a little bit later on. But let's take a look at what we're getting from uh, the serial plotter in terms of RPMs. There we go. So you can see we're cooking along just under 4,500 RPMs with this little motor. 
Um, one of the cool things about this, I think, is to watch it as it starts. So let's turn the power off. Watch the uh, trace on the oscilloscope so you can change, see the frequency of that wave change as the blades slow down. The period of the wave is going to get a lot longer. You see it come up to speed. All right, and sometimes you'll run into the situation here where the, the motor gets a little bit stalled. If this happens to you, just give it a little bump with your finger and that should get it going again. And um, I've seen a fair amount of variation with the RPMs of this motor. If you're getting anywhere between 4,000 and 5,000 RPMs um, when the motor's at full power, that's that's in the ballpark of what you should be seeing, especially with the fan on it. That's, so that's worked pretty well. Um, let's talk troubleshooting because there's a fair amount that can go wrong um, with this particular project. So this is, since we're it's an optical sensor, it's sensitive to the ambient light. So again, we've got to have our reference voltage in the middle of the voltage range that's coming out from the photoresistor circuit. Like the wave has to cross that line, otherwise we won't get interrupts triggering and we won't get a RPM measurement. So if the light is wrong in your room, like if I take my flashlight here, maybe if it'll open. It doesn't wanna to open today, but let's see uh, if I can turn the lights off in the room. We should see the the voltage change rather significantly as we change the ambient lighting, right? So if I turn that lamp up, see how it bumped the, the wave down? And if I keep turning it up, I can actually, yeah, the, the light on the, the photoresistor is too bright right now and I'm not consistently triggering that interrupt. You can see my RPM values are way off all of a sudden, right? But if I were to turn the lights off, now all of a sudden my Voltage range is all good. I'm crossing my reference voltage again, and I get really clean data. So if that happens to you, try changing the ambient lighting around your, your room. Um, also, I tested this pretty extensively with the blue LED, and I found the blue LED gave me the best results. Um, failing that, the, the red and the green were pretty good, but the yellow and the white um, were really difficult for me to to get to work just because of the the brightness of those two LEDs I wasn't getting enough uh, signal to get the interrupt to trigger so I really suggest sticking with the blue LED if possible All right um, and that should be enough to get you guys working you've got to make sure that these the LED and the photoresistor are well lined up if these get misaligned that can mess up the voltages that we're getting out of here if I push the LED out of the way See, they're no longer lined up and our, our wave is, is not triggering the reference voltage anymore. We don't get RPM values. So make, your, make sure your light is lined up. Try varying the, uh, the ambient light that you have. And hopefully that should be enough to get you guys on track. All right. Good luck, guys. Um, as always, come into class. Come ask us questions at office hours. We really like seeing what you guys come up with. Um, be creative on your mount with this one to get this thing lined up. Um, if you need any guidance, just uh, hit us up in class. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon.